Hey guys, so you must be wondering, where is this location, Lily? Where are you currently in the world? And also, why are you in a suit? Because I'm sure this look is not what you guys are used to from me. So, I have all the answers to those questions right now. And I haven't talked to you guys in a while. And you know that if we don't speak for a week, something happens with my life. So, I'm going to update everything that's been happening to me. And I have so many fun, exciting things to share with you guys. First of all, let me get out of this work attire. spoke to you guys I went to Hong Kong to get my exams done after that my life was kind of chill for a bit because I was preparing for a very special interview what is this interview you might ask so back in 2022 when I was learning and researching about the types of jobs that would allow you to kind of travel around the world because that's kind of when my travel passion spark was ignited and of course one of the methods being volunteer was like at the top of my list because at that time it was the most achievable to me in terms of like age in terms of timing in terms of expenses like it made most sense to me so that was something i wanted to do but at the bottom of the list one thing that was recommended was air flight attendant and also cruise crew right so these two was kind of like at the back of my head but i was like no i cannot do that because I was only 19 and the requirement age for both of these jobs are 21. Over the past two years, like I was getting to learn more about these two roles and I realized that flight attendant isn't something that I'm really comfortable with just because of its like it is not as stable as a cruise job. Like this is what I mean, right? For example, like with flight attendant job, you're still living on land. This is still land is kind of where you will get you will rent a home property and you will return back like every once few days few weeks few months like who knows right so you can't really form strong friendships or relationships unless it's with the people that's on board with you and that's like a very small team of people whereas cruise job is very similar to resort jobs that i've worked in the maldives and it was an environment that i was very used to because essentially a cruise is just like a moving hotel you get all the departments in the cruise and i know like this this whole thing that i'm saying might be like very strange or new information to some of you guys who are not in the industry but like i'm sure you've seen like disney cruise or like royal caribbean you've seen like all your favorite influencers going on cruise board it is basically like a hotel you get all the facilities you get all the club you get cinema you get everything you need for your entertainment but you are moving on sea and you're also visiting different places different ports while well while you're traveling and also while you're working mm -hmm. there so yeah that's when i started to really really like the idea of cruise and last year again i was learning more about it but i was checking like all the international sites for how to apply for a cruise job and the requirements were pretty high standards and also there was not very detailed information and i feel like most of the information weren't applicable to me because they were more targeted towards like us or uk candidates and then i was like okay like maybe i should check on the chinese side you know that makes more sense so that's what i did when i came back to china like i was just doing all the research from the chinese side as a chinese applicant because that's what i am and basically like for people like for big cruise ships to hire employees from China, you will have to go to an agency who you'll have your initial interview with. And once you pass that, then they will tell you about the interview dates and how you can get to the next process. So remember, I teased you guys at the beginning of one of my Korean vlogs where I was telling you about I had a cool, nice interview, like a phone screening type thing. So that was with a Chinese agency that I found. So that was kind of just assessing my English abilities. And obviously he's like, okay, you're good at English. So you don't need to get English trainings from us. Um, you know, practice, research about the company. So he gave me information materials to just kind of get used to. And he told me that luckily for you in a month, there is an interview with one, with like with something related to cruise ship, right? Like I will still, I want to still keep some mysteries from you guys. So once i get everything like all the documents confirmed that's when i will just like go out and spill 100 percent of it but right now i can only give you guys 95 percent of the information because i don't want evil energy around right so yeah so that was like what was happening so while i was in korea literally for the first two weeks i was like i was struggling to prepare for the exams like four freaking exams with the ged and also getting used about the interview for one of the biggest job roles like in the world so yeah it was a very stressful time and obviously i had to also clean the hostels and do that <laughs> so it was a very hectic time but I'm, I'm so happy about like how everything like went down and also guys i'm not in korea anymore i feel like i should have started off with that but 
we will get to that too so yeah this is when the agency kind of told me about when the interview is and he told me it's going to be in the first week of first or second week of january 2024 and i was like cool that's uh, that sounds amazing i will be flying back to china i will do my interview i will do all that now going back to my time in Korea, so after the exam basically it was all like chill days, just uh, looking through source materials for this role and of course I also spent my New Year's there and New Year's was I think this was like one of my favorite New Year's that I've ever spent because not only did I get to spend with a group of people where it was like very well planned I went out with my uh, hostel friends like all the other volunteers and we took the bus we reached there on time we knew that the show was starting at 7 or 8 p.m. so we were like let's go early we dipped around 4 p.m. and we were able to get seats in the bus everything was successful after that we all went to see the concert and the concert had like k-pop stars like, hip-hop artists uh, rap artists so yeah like i will insert all the pictures and footages from that night but i didn't know any of the big names but i knew like they were pretty big in korea because all my friends all my korean friends were pretty crazy about it and even my international friends like they were screaming and shouting when i posted those celebrities on my story so i was really happy that i got to see that so new year's passed and then the days after that uh, the weather was getting good so i just explored a few more places in jeju island me and my friend we took a trip to udo island i uploaded a vlog related to that on my tiktok so you guys should check it out and then the next day like me and the gang we went to this tiny little coin karaoke booth in jeju it was so affordable and so cute and also very nice for like a small group outing because like if you're going out with one or two friends you really don't want to book a whole karaoke place which is expensive and you're forced to buy alcohol that was a new experience and then after that i rushed to the airport and that pretty much wrapped up my jeju trip after that, I flew to Hanzo for one night, so you guys know Hanzo is my hometown. Caught up with my grandma and my cousins and gave them like all the souvenirs I bought from Jeju Island, obviously, which is a lot. And that kind of like took away half of my luggage space, so thankfully that is done. I exchanged all my clothes because Jeju was super, super cold, so I had like really thick winter clothes packed with me. The place where I was headed next, I knew that it was going to be slightly warmer, so that was done. And then here I am right now in Qingdao, which which is an island city in China. Like, I don't know what it is with me, but like there's something with me on islands, right? Like, first of all, I grew up in Bahrain Island, then I worked in Maldives Island, then I volunteered in Jeju Island, and now I'm doing an interview in Qingdao Island. So you can take the girl out of the island, but you can never take the island out of the girl. I'm here for the interview with the cruise job bro. The past two nights, I haven't had proper sleep because of the continuous flight. And I keep booking flights that take place at like 6, 7 a.m., which means I need to be at the airport by 2, 3 a.m., which means I can't sleep the previous night. So really it's my fault for booking cheap flights like that But I wasn't able to get enough sleep and I was really stressed out The agency told us there was going to be three rounds for this interview First round was going to be in English, second round is going to be in Chinese And third round is going to be kind of like a mix between the two And today at um, 8 o'clock I woke up We're supposed to be at the interview place by 8.50, right? I woke up at 8 and I got ready everything. I left my place at 8.30 because we're required to do a bit of makeup, you know, to look more presentable. That took me a little bit of time. So 8.30 and the walk from here to the place is 20 minutes. So I was like, perfect, you know, like I can make it exactly at 8.50 <laughs> to the interview. And I did. I reached the building at like 8.49. So we got up and there was around like 20 candidates. It was like a big group, right? So we're all doing the interview the same day. It was not like a just individual show up kind of thing. Like this is how crews interviews or at least the ones in China works for your information. If you happen to be a Chinese candidate looking for a cruise job on YouTube. Then like the first, uh, first group, we did like a group activity, which is like the English round. So the teacher had like a bag of name badges and all of her names were written there. Then she went around distributing the name badge to each student, but we're not supposed to get our name. We're supposed to get someone else's name. And then we were required to go around the classroom to find the person that we got and we're supposed to communicate with them, ask about what their interests are, what their job experience is, and just to get to know them as a person. And after we got to know them as a person, we're supposed to report back to the class, uh, standing Front of everyone and introduce them about like you know what we've learned about them just how they are and just introduce them to everybody else that kind of just tests our ability to speak english and of course also to test like how we will get uh, connected and interact with customers when we're actually on the cruise ship the second round was a role play round so i still don't want to 
introduce which position I'm applying for just yet, but it was basically we had to role play scenarios that would happen if we were working that specific job role. So the teacher will group all of us into groups of two, and well, I got a group of three because there was one extra student, like we had an odd number of people, so I was in the group of three. Like she will give us a scenario, and she will assign us as well, like who will be the employee and who will be the guest. So we had to act out the scenarios that she gave us and how we will deal with the guest complaint and all that stuff. And I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, if I get the role as the employee and if she give us the question in Chinese, like I am just, I'm screwed, right? There's no way I can do that because it's been a while since I spoke Chinese as well. Like I was speaking Chinese with some customers back in the Maldives, but... And then afterwards, it's just been like my grandma's house speaking like super informal language to her. So I've forgotten all the professional exams and all the greetings. But luckily, I got the role as the customer and it was like an angry customer role. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, why are you not doing this? Like, can you please make exception for us? And I was doing like throwing in all my acting skills. That, that was pretty fun. We wrapped up both the rounds by 12.30. She also showed us some presentations of the job, of the company, blah, 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 all that stuff. By 12.30, we went out for lunch and by one o'clock, we had to come back for round three. So round three, the interviewer was, was like sitting in a tiny little room on the other side of like, well, opposite our class. And there she was calling like two students together to come into the room and she was interviewing them face to face, asking all the questions, asking about their experiences on the CV and all that. Again, like I was with my group of threes, so we went together and she asked us two questions each. She was mainly like uh, curious about why I changed my jobs a couple of times because like Obviously, you guys know I've changed my job roles and also the countries that I went to. So she was like, okay, girl, like, what is going on? <laughs> but I gave her, like, my explanation and she's like, okay, makes sense. And also, like, you're young, you know, so, like, obviously, you have to experience jobs. And I was, like, really glad that she actually understood that. Then she told us to, like, kind of prioritize um, three things. And she made us all say the answers. So she's like, between career growth, okay, between career growth, travel, and income, which one is most important to you? Like, and just like rank them, right? So I was like, obviously like income comes first because being on board on a cruise, you get to save a lot of money because you don't have much places to spend. Just like how I was on the island because you don't get like supermarkets or like cinemas. Well, you get that for the guests, but like you, as a crew, you will not be going to those places every single day. And you're not allowed to go like on and about to different bars or clubs. There's going to be like a limited number of options for you. So you can save a lot of money. Secondly comes career growth because Obviously, I was working in the hotel background, like hospitality work, so I kind of want to like pursue that direction and I love travels. So hospitality is kind of like where I'm leading towards in terms of my career. And certainly comes travel because I've already traveled a lot, so I want to keep traveling more. But like obviously that's not my top top priority even though like it kind of is though but i mean like money you know money money travels money if you have money you can travel <laughs> so that's what i told her and then she asked like you know which type of cruise lines like the itinerary i'm more interested towards whether i like the european and american lines or whether i prefer more of like the asian lines so like in asia uh, a lot of cruise lines will be sailing towards like hong kong singapore japan uh, maybe some other southeastern Asian countries and in the European American lines well it has all the European American countries so you get like uh, the Bahamas the Caribbean sides and also little islands in America and of course like Italy France every place with the port so it really depends on the ship the cruise the itinerary and all that stuff and I was like because I've traveled a lot in Asia already I would lean towards Europe and America and she was like hold on now hold on because you prioritize income first and actually People in Asia spend more, so Asian lines would be more costly. So this is kind of a conflict, and I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> oh I'm fucked. But yeah, I was like, she was really understanding that she was like, maybe the, mon the monetary value doesn't mean to you as much as it would mean to somebody else. And that honestly is true because like some of the candidates that came, they were like in the 30s with like a kid. So they really, when they mean prioritize money, they mean like they need to have enough money to you know, provide for their kids, for their family, for their spouse, for their parents. But for me, money just means like, I want money so I can keep traveling and like, I mean, I guess eventually buying a house or something. Like, I don't know, man, I'm 21 and I haven't thought about these things yet. But yeah, I do want to save up a little bit of money for the next few years so I can go to college. Um, but yeah, I was like, you know, the money doesn't really mean as much to me, but like, yes, saving money would be good. 
so like that's what i mean with the money aspect and she's like yeah sounds good so she asked like all of us questions and then that's kind of how we wrapped up and we're told by the agencies that i was told by the interview and the agencies that by tonight or tomorrow morning we will get the update on who is hired and who is not so i'm not that stressed about it and i also feel like i did pretty well today um during lunch all the girls were surrounding me and they made me feel like a celebrity and they were so freaking cute man i love i love these girls so much and I'm so glad like I got to be in this environment because you know most interviews with big groups is going to be like oh mm, um, you know everybody's gonna have some type of pride and they don't want to like mingle with everyone else but here everybody was like so friendly we were all girls in 20s and we we're all just like complimenting each other like oh my god you look so pretty oh my god you guys are making me insecure like everybody's so pretty you guys I hope we all get in so that is like kind of the gist of how my interview went and I hope like that is useful to people who are also applying for cruise roles like obviously depending on your job the cruise interview type would be different but just to give you an idea, this is how my process went. Now we just sit and wait for the results. Hi guys, I'm currently in Qingdao Airport and I'm going to be boarding the flight in like 40 minutes but I thought I would give you guys an update. So like about a couple of hours ago, while I was in taxi, ready to come to the airport, I got a message from my agent saying that I got selected. Like. I, like, I mean, I kind of predicted that, but it was just so nice to hear it in words and writing that I am indeed selected. And um, yeah, just now, like, they made a whole group chat of everybody who's been selected. And it's crazy because the first group chat with all the people who wanted to take part in the interview had about 70 people. And the group chat of everyone who got selected had only 10 people. So I was checking like all the people who got like chosen and the one that I practiced like introducing like, who I did the first round of interview with and I introduced him as like, you know, so and so and he introduced me, he got selected and I was so fucking happy because like we really vibed and like he seems like a really talented person too. So I knew that he was going to be chosen and he did get chosen. So yeah, it's crazy to think like we were partnered up and both of us got selected. Um, I was kind of sad because like a lot of the cool girls that I met yesterday weren't in the group so yeah I hope maybe like next time in the future we can always be on board together but I'm just I'm just like I mean like I have so much things to uh, I can't even speak because I'm so excited I'm gonna be on a fucking cruise that's crazy like oh my god I'm gonna be on a cruise I'm gonna be sailing the middle of a sea I mean like I was living in the middle of the sea for four months in the Maldives, but like now I'm gonna be sailing in the middle of the sea, which is equally crazy. <laughs> but yeah, this is so exciting. And now I'm going to go to Wuhan to do my trainings. So I will see you guys when I reach my hotel, which I haven't booked yet. So I should probably do that. Hi guys, it's 11 p.m. right now and I've just reached my hotel room, which is 10 minutes away from the airport. I decided to stay at a hotel today because I'll be checking to the school tomorrow and I kind of just wanted some privacy with myself. So right now I'm eating some takeaway food and I was actually really surprised that um, food places can actually deliver to this hotel because it is literally in the middle of nowhere. Wuhan's airport is so like on the countryside. There was like no street lights on the entire drive from the airport to here. And apparently it's also super hard to get taxis, but I was just really lucky that I got one immediately. So tomorrow I'll have to wake up like really early and go to the school to check myself in. Teachers advise us like not to go out and about after 6 p.m. like once it gets dark because there is literally nothing to do outside. And that's kind of fun. I guess I'm gonna be living a prison life for a whole month, but it's worth a sacrifice because after that I'm gonna be living a prison life in a much cooler place where I'm gonna be confined in the middle of the beautiful oceans and I get like nice sunset in exchange. So that is a good exchange. No, but like I'm really, really, really excited for the cruise ship and I'm so happy with like everybody else's reply to my Instagram stories as well. Like everybody's so happy and I'm so glad that everybody thinks this job is like literally made for me because I feel the same way. It just kind of like hits my target in every in every aspect. So I'm really happy about that. Good afternoon, guys. So it's the very next day and I've already checked into the school. I've done all the paperwork, registered, got my class schedules. This is the building of our school and this like there's literally a boat looking building over here which i think is pretty cool there is a huge playground so we can do trainings our running sessions basketball well there's like a lot going on 
there are some seating areas to chill with friends although like the school is kind of saluted right now like there's not much students so yeah I kind of have the whole place to myself i guess and i got into my room i met my roommate my roommate and i actually entered the school at the same time like she was doing her paperwork like two minutes before me and when she said like she wanted to stay in the two people bedroom i was like wait i think like she's gonna be my roommate because that's the same room that i'm going to be living as well because there's a few different type of room categories it's like two people sharing one space six people or eight people and yeah like i feel like the budget was okay for two people so i felt meeting one other person can actually make us feel closer and yeah it just makes better friendships than a huge group of people so i'm excited about that and um i haven't checked out a lot of places in the school yet i haven't checked out the cafeteria or the shower rooms i want to do that later i was just too focused about like unpacking my suitcase and keeping everything in the room uh, the room is really spacious too the ac does not work but also like i mean it's still pretty cold so i don't think we'll be using that so that's fine and i tried ordering a couple of things from supermarkets and grocery stores around here it was also very convenient which again i was surprised because reminder we're kind of in the middle of nowhere so i guess that is all i am so excited for this experience and i'm so happy that i decided to get back to youtube so i'm able to document the whole process and all my transitions and every step of the way and maybe also like inspire other people who think like it's just so beyond them to do something as cool as this because it was beyond me too but I feel like me breaking down the process will make it easier for some of you guys. So yeah, I am so happy that you guys are watching this. Like if you are still watching this and tomorrow I have my first class. Wish me luck and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.